Unify have now released 2.0 for Unify Protect. And in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the features and some of the new bits that have been released with this update. So right behind me at the moment, you could probably see a list of a load of things that have been updated. Um, there's quite a few improvements in the web UI, and I will give you a quick comparison against a previous version just to show you some of the differences. Uh, some of the key ones that I'm more interested in are web UI low latency streaming. We'll try and test a doorbell or a camera with and without the low latency streaming to see how that looks. The update to the doorbell screen design. So we know the G4 Doorbell Pro came with the same settings as the G4 Doorbell, so it'll be good to see how this works. The improved video player UX. Animated thumbnails and emails and also within the UI, within the UX itself. And the G4 Doorbell Pro package protection. Now. There are a bunch of fixes as well, but I'm not going to go through all of these. But one thing that's interesting is uh, Ubiquiti have put an asterisk here. Um, and if I actually search this page, there is only one asterisk. So maybe I might be misunderstanding this, not quite sure what that asterisk means. I would have thought they were relating to something else, but I can't actually see anything on this page. So if you have seen it, drop me a comment down below and I'll, I'll be interested to know what that is. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, do share, and comment down below what you think of this latest version of Unify Protect. On the right hand side you have a Cloud Key Plus, which is running 1.21.2 I believe, of Unify Protect, and the one on the left is a UDM SE, which is running 2.0.0. So straight looking at the front pages, there isn't really too much difference on here. If I scroll down to the bottom, one of the main things that I've noticed is a bit different is we now have package detection, which is something that's just come about in this update. And you now have the option to click on these individual cameras and select them. I'll go to this side and if I actually click on one of these, it doesn't highlight up with anything. So you can't actually do anything. Whereas if I click on the newer side, I can go to front door and I can go straight into the recording settings. I'm just going to go over the differences quickly that I've seen. I'm not going to go through each and every bit because otherwise this will turn into a really long video. One of the other differences I've noticed is the UI settings are a little bit different. Again, the one on the right is running the older version. We have a recordings tab there, which on the left hand side we no longer have. This looks a little bit more in line to the way Unify have the network set up. So you have video retention, recording schedules, device group management. So you can now group your cameras if you wanted to. So if I want to select something called doorbells, I can select my two, like my front door and G4 Doorbell Pro and click add. And that's now created a group with those two uh, doorbells. I'm sure coming down the line, I haven't seen it yet. Maybe you can assign different schedules and stuff to it. We have the migration file, uh, which is similar to the configuration backups, which is exactly the same there. We have the link devices and we have some other configurations down here. This is where the low latency video is. So you would select this option just here and then you could have low latency video. We're gonna have a look at that in a few minutes though. We're not gonna to come to that just yet. So the next difference is the settings within uh, the cameras themselves. So on the, on the newer version, we've got the G4 Doorbell Pro and on the right hand side, we've got a camera that we are using, which is a G4 Pro. So right here, you can see fairly similar in terms of the data in terms of the MAC address and the IP address and the uptime. Where it starts to go a little bit different is the recording mode. So if we have a look there, we have recording on one and recording mode on the other. Um, you have the scheduling, so you can apply your schedules to this. Now again, some of the other sections have been updated in terms of naming. So you have detections. So right here you have motion detection and smart detection. And then you can actually select what you want. So person, vehicle or package. Package is only available on the G4 Pro according to the website. And we have the smart detections on this side, which is the person and vehicle detection uh, on the G4 Pro. Motion zones, uh, smart detection zones, and privacy zones. And you have detection record settings, which again are fairly similar, recording quality, motion zones, smart zones, and then privacy zones. So some of the settings are the same, but some of them are a little bit different too, in terms of where they're placed. Then we have a look at the settings tab. You can see it's just got the name, the microphone sensitivity. So this is where the device group is. So we already have the device group that we configured earlier. So we can change it back to none, or we can put it under doorbells, whichever you want. You can actually now adjust the camera picture from here. So if I click on this, it brings up the settings that we're, I guess we're kind of used to previously. Maybe this is a bit of a UI glitch because of the way of the size I've got the window, but we can start playing around with some of the settings on here if we wanted to do so. Uh, microphone sensitivity, the infrared, you can now change the sensitivity just here. Status sounds, lights, 
and this is where the doorbell message is. No further update in terms of adding your own image or whatever it is. You can type in a message of whatever you want. You can create a new message and you can display it for a number of times. Please do not knock. I don't know, say for example you've got someone sleeping in the house and you don't want them to knock. Uh, 5 minutes, 30 minutes, 1 hour, however long you want and that will display the message on the front of the doorbell. We have the chime, we have the overlay information, Wi-Fi connection, none of this has really changed, this is all the same. The RTSP feed, you can actually do the package cam now as well which is really cool. And finally manage. There's some of the differences between the two versions. Now a couple of things that I wanted to look into a little bit further, one was the package cam. So I mentioned earlier about the package cam on the G4 Doorbell Pro. Uh, I actually found on the front door as well. So if I go to recording mode and detections, there's actually a package available there. I've actually tested this and it does actually pick up a package. It doesn't notify you because the notification option isn't there yet. Now whether this was meant to be taken out before this release or whatever, but that does actually work. And I'll show you it working in a minute. If I quickly jump across to settings and go to notifications, if I go to the doorbell notifications, you can see we have package detection just here. And that does pop up because you can see that. I'll show you a quick demo on the screen just now of that popping up and that, that's just there. But on the G4 doorbell, that notification doesn't exist. So if I quickly go back to my detections. So if I filter out by packages, you can see I have two here that were actually taken on my G4 doorbell pro. But this is my front door. So if I click on this, you can see that package is just there. And it's picked up the package from my G4 doorbell. So even though the support may not be there for it there, the G4 doorbell package detection does work because I've just tested it out and it does work. It just doesn't notify you. Whereas on your G4 doorbell pro, you will get the notification to say there's a package at your door. For the animated thumbnails, I'm just filtered this by person. And if I just highlight over one, for example, like this one, if I just highlight over this, you can see it's animated. So you can now have a quick preview of actually what's happened just there. I'm just going to try and demo the best I can in terms of low latency streaming. So at the moment I've got a little camera back here that you can see set up and you probably see my screen in front of me as well. So I've got that set up and I want to show you the delay that I'm seeing. So if I put my hand up and if I start counting one, two, three, four, and five, you can see there's a little bit of a delay. Now this generally is quite good, this latency, it's not too bad. But when you enable low latency streaming, it will stop those delays happening further. So there has been cases where I'm streaming through looking at a live view and there's a bit of a latency lag. So what you just need to do is just quickly go to settings, scroll down to the bottom, click low latency, and then you can go back to the live view. Now this is the low latency in the live view. So you let me know if you can see any difference. One, two, three, four, five. So that's the low latency test. So you can see, I think just looking at it, it's ever so slightly quicker, but I'm in optimal con conditions. I have a G4 bullet, which is plugged into the network and I'm close to my access point on my Wi-Fi laptop. So these are pretty much optimal conditions other than being hardwired into the network. If anybody's seen any better results, please let me know down in the comments because I'd like to know how good the low latency streaming actually is. One more thing I want to show you and that is the two different UX players. So I have one on the old version on the right hand side and one on the new version on the left hand side. So as you can see on the screen just here, so looking at the old version we used to have this bar at the bottom which shows you the forward, back and the full screen and then you have the zoom in at the top. Unfortunately I can't show you the full image but you can see the top and the bottom of the image which is good enough for this demo. On the newer version you can see we still have the zoom bar at the top um, we have the playback buttons just forward back, we have the change of the quality, the volume, the playback speed and also full screen as well. So that's also, there's a few extra features in there and that's also useful. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know down in the comments if you've upgraded to version 2 and let me know what your thoughts are on it. I don't think this is a major release, there are a few different changes but I don't think this is a major release, there's a few different updates. Um, maybe they're going in a different direction which is why they've started 2.0 but let's see what's to come. Remember to like and subscribe and share the video if you want. My affiliate links are down in the description below so feel free to check them out. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.